mom and dad were watching TV when mom said, I'm tired, it's getting late. I think I'll go to bed. She went to the kitchen to make sandwiches for the next day's lunches, took meat out of the freezer for supper the following evening, put spoons and bowls on the table for breakfast, and started the coffee pot for brewing the next morning. She then put some wet clothes into the dryer, put a load of clothes into the wash, ironed a shirt. She picked up some game pieces left on the table, watered the plants, emptied a waste basket, and hung up a towel to dry. She yawned, stretched, headed for the bedroom. She stopped by the desk and emailed a quick message to her son's teacher, counted out some cash for the field trip, pulled a textbook out from hiding under the chair. She signed a birthday card for a friend and wrote a quick note for the grocery store. She put both near her purse. Mom then put on moisturizer, brushed and flossed her teeth, and trimmed her nails. Hubby called, I thought you were going to bed. I'm on my way, she said. She put some water in the dog's dish and then made sure the doors were locked. She looked in on each of the kids and turned out a bedside lamp, hung up a shirt, threw some dirty socks in the hamper, and had a brief conversation with the one up still doing homework. In her own room, she set the alarm, laid out clothing for the next day, straightened up the shoe rack. She added three things to her to-do list for tomorrow. About this time, the hubby turned off the TV and announced to no one in particular, I'm going to bed. And he did. <laughs> okay, maybe that's a bit of an extreme example. But some of you mothers in here go, yep, yep, I relate to that. Mothers are indeed special people. And as Tim had said, we all have one. If you're here and you don't have a mother, please talk to me afterwards. I really want to find out how that happened. First point that I want to make, and I have a nice tight outline for us this morning, is that a godly mother is a giving mother. And the example that we're going to use is from the Old Testament, from the book of 1 Samuel, and it's Hannah. And I'm pretty sure you're familiar with Hannah. Her story is a great story. And we read in Hannah's story in 1 Samuel chapter 1 that there was a certain man from the hill country of Ephraim whose name was Elkanah. And Elkanah had two wives, one called Hannah and the other Penina. And now Penina had children and Hannah did not. And we find that Hannah was childless because we read in verse 5, the Lord had closed her womb. Now, you can try every remedy under the sun. You can meet with the best doctors in the world. You can take all the medication. You can go to a fertility clinic. But when the Lord closes your womb, there is no remedy, surgery, or doctor, doctor that can help you. She was not going to conceive. She was not going to get pregnant. And then Israel and the ancient Near East, for a woman, for a married woman, that was both debilitating and humiliating. And to make matters wor worse, the other wife would ridicule her and tease her because she had a lot of children. And it was very, very difficult. We read, her rival used to provoke her grievously to irritate her. And it worked. So on one occasion, when they went to Shiloh to visit the tabernacle, Hannah cried out to the Lord, and we read in verse 10, she was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She was broken. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been broken? Have you ever been full of despair or have a heartbreak, feeling a sense of hopelessness? Well, if you have, we can learn something from Hannah. And we read that she made a vow. She made a promise to God. In verse 11, she says, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him 
to the Lord all the days of his life. Now notice what she says. She says, Lord, remember me. Do not forget your servant. She feels like the Lord has forgotten her. Now I know, I know that some of you probably have had moments like that. You're, you're like, hey, hey, Lord, remember me? Do you remember me? I feel like you're not listening. Let me tell you something. God is always listening. Maybe we don't feel like he's listening because what we are asking for is not what he feels is best for us. And so we ask and we don't receive because we're asking for the wrong things. John, in John 9.31 we read, If anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. And then 1 John 5.14, and this is a confidence that we have towards him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And Hannah definitely did that. Hannah prays, God, if you give me a son, I will turn around and I will give him right back to you. And she did. And she gave birth to a boy named Samuel, who will turn out to be one of the greatest men in the Bible. He was unique in that he was the last judge, he was a priest, and he was a prophet. And he was the first priest to anoint a king. This mother, Hannah, gave to the Lord the greatest things she had to give. She gave her only son. Does that sound familiar? A giving woman reflects the love of God the Father. Our God is a giving God. One only has to turn to John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, his one and only son. And we read in Matthew chapter 7, verse 11, If you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? And in James 1.17, every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. And then in Romans 8.32, he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We could read verse after verse after verse of how our Father likes to give us good things. A giving woman a giving mother reflects the love of God our Father. That's the first point. The second point is this. A godly mother is an interceding mother. And now we'll flip to the New Testament to see our example there of the Canaanite woman. And this is a very interesting text because this is not uh, a woman, a Jewish woman. Starting in verse 21, uh, we read this. The first 21 of uh, Matthew 15, we read, and Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she's crying out after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Even the dogs eat the crumbs from their master's table. And then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This, this woman, this mother, who's not even an Israelite, comes to Jesus and he intercedes for her daughter. She says, Jesus, Lord, have mercy. My child is possessed. Now, I don't know if you've ever prayed that before. Uh, I think my mom maybe has prayed, Lord, I think Jonathan's possessed. I'm fairly confident you don't have a possessed child, even though you might think so. You might have an unruly child. You might have a rebellious child, but that's another message for another time. I want to focus on this woman's faith. She cries out to Jesus. We've all done that. 
But here's the crazy thing. Jesus ignores her. He doesn't answer her. Imagine that. How could Jesus do that? How could he not answer her? I want to make a point, and I want you to listen very closely to this. Not answering and not listening are two very different things. We already noted that God is always listening. He is. But he, if he's not answered yet, he has good reason. So keep trying. Keep praying. Keep persisting. Why? Why? Because if God hasn't said yes, but he asks, and he, and he hasn't said no, keep trying. He wants you to try harder. He wants you to keep persisting. He wants you to dig deeper. When God definitely says no, we usually know it, don't we? But if he hasn't said no, and he hasn't said yes, keep asking. This woman, this mother, she's clearly persistent. How do I know that? Because listen to what the disciples say. They say, Lord, please send this woman away. She is driving us crazy. She keeps calling out over and over and over. She's so persistent. And how does Jesus respond? Jesus says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Basically, he says, woman, my time to come help you hasn't come yet. You'll, you'll have your opportunity. I've come right now to the Jews. So be patient. And this woman is thinking, I'm a mother, and my daughter is suffering, and patience isn't an option. And so she does what Jacob does in Genesis chapter 32, and she clings to God. And she continues to intercede for her daughter. And we read that she knelt before him and said, Lord, please help me. I don't know the scene, but I imagine Jesus is trying to walk and she blocks him and just gets down in front of him and says, Lord, help me. And Jesus looks to her and he says, it's not right, though, to take the children's bread and to throw it to dogs. And apparently, without hesitation, this woman replies and says, yes, Lord, I'll take your leftover, leftovers, though, because I have nothing better to give, nothing better that I can do. And then Jesus looks at her and says, oh, woman, great is your faith. And her daughter is healed instantly, instantly. There is power in the faith and the prayers of a mother. I know that. I know that. An interceding woman reflects the love of God the Son. We read in Romans chapter 8, Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Hebrews 7, consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. And then 1 John 2, 1, my little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Imagine that our Lord Jesus is constantly making intercession for you and me. He sits at the right hand of the Father day and night as our advocate, and he never tires. He never tires. You, you can't say to him, Lord, I'm sorry, I've done this again, and I know you're exhausted for interceding for me. If we could hear him, he'd say, I, I, I would do it again and again, and I'll do it 70 times 7, because I love you. I have known through the years that my mother has been praying for me and interceding for me, and I cannot thank you enough, Mom. An interceding woman reflects the love of God the Son. And then thirdly, and lastly, a godly mother is a helping mother. And we're going to go back to uh, 
the Old Testament, to Ruth. And in the book of Ruth, we actually are first introduced to a woman named Naomi. And she's a widow, and she has two daughters-in-law. One is Orpah, not Oprah, Orpah, and the other is Ruth. And she tells them to go home and to find another husband. Three widows. And Naomi has nothing that she can give her daughters-in-law. There's just nothing she has to offer them. And she needs to go back. She's a widow. She needs to, to be cared for. So she's going to go home, which is going to be Bethlehem and Judah. And Bethlehem and Judah is no place for a Moabite woman. So she encourages them to return to the place of their family so they too can be cared for. So Orpah does that. She returns to Moab, but Ruth does not. Ruth clings to her mother-in-law. And Ruth says to her mother-in-law in Ruth chapter 1, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. And your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. Ruth was the quintessential helper. She returns to Bethlehem with her mother-in-law, Naomi, and she would stay with Naomi, and she would look for how she can help her. What can I do? And she goes out, and if you remember the story, she's just following even after those who are harvesting the fields. And she does whatever is in her capability to do. She can't do much, but she does what she can. And she's noticed. People notice her. And she catches the eye of the owner of the field, a certain Boaz, and he's impressed. And we read in Ruth chapter 2, I've heard how you've helped your mother-in-law ever since your husband died. You even left your own father and mother to come and live in a foreign land among people you do not know. I pray that the Lord God of Israel will reward you for what you have done. And and Boaz's prayer is answered, the Lord does reward Ruth. In fact, he's going to use the very man who prayed it to do that. She will become the wife of Boaz, and then she will become a mother. And then she will become the grandmother of King David. And so on account of Ruth, Naomi ends up being called blessed, blessed. And I wonder how many of us, if we knew what was going on in heaven, might find out that we're called blessed because of our mothers. We all know how, sac how sacrificial, how helpful a servant like and servant like our mothers can be. We know they help all the time. They do their fair share of work, don't they? Our mothers. They are helpers. The harried housewife sprang to the telephone when it rang and listened with relief to the kindly voice in her ear. How are you, darling? It said. What kind of day are you having? Oh, mother, said the housewife, breaking into bitter tears. I've had such a bad day. The baby won't eat and the washing machine broke down. I haven't had a chance to go shopping, and besides, I've just hurt my ankle, and I'm hobbling around, and on top of that, the house is a mess, and I'm supposed to have two couples to dinner tonight. Mother was all at once, all sympathy. Oh, darling, she said, sit down and relax and close your eyes. I'll be over in a half an hour. I'll do your shopping. I'll clean up your house, and I'll cook your dinner for you, and I'll feed the baby, and I'll call a repairman I know who will be able to come to your house and fix that washing machine. Stop, cry, stop, stop crying, daughter. I'll take care of everything. In fact, I'll even call George at the office and tell him he ought to come over right now and help at once. George, said the housewife. Who's George? Why, George is your husband. Isn't this 353-1373? Three, three, three? 
No, it's 3531375. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I had the wrong number. There was a short pause in the housewife said, does this mean you're not coming over? <laughs> Mothers are helpful. If not the quintessential example of helpful. A helping mother reflects the love of God, the Holy Spirit. In John 14, 16, we read, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Then John 14, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. And in Acts 5, and we are witness to the, witnesses to these things and so is the Holy Spirit who God has given to those who obey him. Well, what a privilege it is to have the help of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I mean, how does the Holy Spirit help us? Think about it. Well, he, he helps us learn truth. He renews our mind. He convicts us. He satisfies us. He helps us to pray. He gives us the power to witness. He gives us spiritual gifts. We could go on and on and on in the ways in which the Holy Spirit helps us. And a helping woman reflects the love and work of the Holy Spirit. We are all so, so privileged to have mothers like that. This is a really special time, really. I, I love Mother's Day. Um, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for us to honor our mothers. And so what I want to do with some of the time that we have now, uh, is I want to open uh, the floor here for you children to be able, or adults, everyone is invited, to be able to share ways in which you appreciate your mother. Whether she's a giving mother, an interceding mother, or helping mother, or, or, or all three. So this is your chance to give us a little testimony, as we say, kids, about what your mother means to you. Anybody want to start? Who wants to start? Raise your hand. Okay. My mother has not had a very easy life, but she's always put the kids before everything else. And I just want you to know how much I love you and appreciate everything you've always done for us. Thank you, Krista. I love my mom because she helps us dissect things in school and stuff. <laughs> and um, she's been helping us with schoolwork and all that other stuff. And she's just been an awesome mom. Thank you. That was my fourth point. A godly woman is a dissecting woman. <laughs> I just forgot to add that. <laughs> Christian. My mom is loving and caring, and she takes care of us and feeds us, and she, uh, she loves all of us, and she... <clears throat> gives us a great place to live and and we all love her and she loves us. Yeah, that's a good one. Thank you, Christian. Anybody else? I love my mom because she does dishes, takes care of the house and Helps us with school, even though when it's really hard, she tells us an easier way to do it so it's not as hard for us. Well, that's good. That's good. I uh, hope you see this, Mom, sometime. But uh, my mom led me to the Lord when I was pretty scared of death and eternity. Uh, and just Recently, she came up from Nebraska, drove herself all the way here to help us out with Titus, and uh, really brought us through in a hard, hard time. And I'm thinking of you, 
John, this morning, just that God would heal you. You've been an amazing mother, too. Anybody else? It's your chance, yeah? I love my mom because she teaches us and helps us with homework, and then uh, and when we're done, she lets us play. <laughs> and that's important. Um, I love my mom because even when things get really busy, she makes an effort to be present in all of our lives, like especially with sports right now. She's trying to map it out how to be to everyone's game. And now that I'm driving and stuff like that, she still offers to take me places and goes out of her way to help me in all of the stuff that I do. Yeah. See how much moms help? Anybody else? My mom is an awesome mom. She, <laughs> <laughs> um, my mother inspires me to love and serve Jesus all the time. So, yeah. I just uh, wanted to lift mom up in praise. I just really um, appreciate her, pers her persistence in our lives, uh, continually praying for us and, and lifting us up. And she is that persistent mom who doesn't give up in prayer. And her prayers have been powerful. I'm very thankful for that. And uh, and I'm thankful that you haven't given up. You haven't given up on John yet either. So keep, keep praying for him. Yeah. I appreciate her. Anybody else? Um, I love my mom because um, certain time, well, every Sunday we go to the beach now, and, and since it's a special day today, Mother's Day, we're having borrowless chocolate cake and a, a cheesecake and other things. I don't really know, though. But today, since it's going to be hot, we're going to actually be able to swim in the beach today because last time we went to the beach, it was raining. And so this week should be funner than last week. From the mouth of babes, yes. Anything else? Anybody? Well, thank you uh, for participating, children. And I know that you love your moms. I know you love your moms. We all love our moms. But how are we going to apply what we've heard this morning? Well, I have something for everyone, and I'm going to start with the women. Ladies, first of all, I want you to realize that You don't have to be a mother to be a godly woman. And we appreciate all the ladies in our church, whether you're married or unmarried, whether you have children or you don't. You are special. And so what I want you to do is I want you to pick on one of these, these points this week just to work on. That's your application. Work on either giving interceding, or helping. Just, just focus on one. Give it to the Lord and see how you can do even more to be like our God. Men. Men, if uh, you are married, whether you have children or not, your challenge this week is to honor your wife. Honor your wife. And men, if you're not married, honor your mother. So there's your challenge, men and boys. You know, there is a phrase 
in the Hebrew that is translated woman of valor, and it comes from Proverbs chapter 31. It's traditionally sung every Friday before this Shabbat meal, before Sabbath, from husbands to their wives. It's an interesting and really cool tradition in the Jewish faith. Men, I'll let you figure out how you can honor your wife or your mother this week. And then children. Listen up, children. I have an application for you, too, just for you. I want you to do something special for your mom this week, okay? Kids, you can do this. It's your challenge this week. I got some ideas in case you're wondering. You can uh, make her breakfast and read her a psalm. Think about that, huh? She can come down and have breakfast made, and you can open the Bible and read her a psalm. I guarantee if you do that, your mom is going to love it. Am I right, moms? Would you love that? Oh, yeah. Or you can give her flowers, or you can make her a card, or you can give her flowers and make her a card. Or you can clean for her instead of her cleaning for you. Yeah? They're all going, no, no. Yeah, that's a big thing. And thank you, thank her for all that she does every day and for being a godly mother. These are things, children, that you can do for your mom this week. Well, I want to conclude, since today is Mother's Day, that we should end reminding ourselves of the depth of wisdom that we owe to our mothers. For example, my mother taught me logic. If you fall off that swing and break your neck, you can't go to the store with me. <laughs> my mother taught me logic. My mother taught me about medicine. If you don't stop crossing your eyes, they're going to get stuck that way. She taught me about medicine. My mother taught me to think ahead. If you don't pass your spelling test, you're never going to get a good job. My mother was an English major, so I don't know. My mother taught me to meet a challenge. Answer me when I talk to you. Don't talk back to me. My mother taught me about humor. Oh, did she ever? When that lawnmower cuts off your toes, don't come running to me. <laughs> My mother taught me how to become adult, an adult. If you don't eat your vegetables, you'll never grow up. My mother taught me about genetics. You are just like your father. My mother taught me about the wisdom of age. When you get to my age, you'll understand. My mother taught me about anticipation. Just wait till your father gets home. My mother taught me about receiving. You're going to get it when we get home. My mother taught me about justice. One day you're going to have kids and they're going to turn out just like you. And this is my favorite one. My mother taught me about my ancestry. Do you think you were born in a barn? <laughs> my mother taught me about giving. My mother taught me about intercession and prayer, and my mother taught me about helping others. My mother is a godly woman. Mom, happy Mother's Day. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the gift of motherhood. And as you tell us in the book of Exodus, we are to honor our father and our mother. And we do honor our mother this morning, but we also want to acknowledge that 
anything wonderful that our mothers do, they are reflecting you, reflecting your goodness, reflecting your love for us. So we pray for our mothers that they will continue to grow in their faith, that they will continue to grow and honor as they fulfill the purpose and the role that you have given to them. And for all of our ladies this morning, wed or unwed, we thank you for the prize that they are, for what they bring to the church, for what they bring to the kingdom of heaven. And as men, Lord, thank you for the privilege of caring for them, watching over them, and honoring them. Let us not take that lightly. And as children, again, thank you for our mothers, Father, that you give to us. We love them so. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.